What's up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we're in the brand new 2024 Nissan Sentra courtesy of Younger Nissan in Frederick, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we're in this one today because there has been a slight refresh, a redesign for the 2024 Sentra. The interior is actually slightly refreshed as well and believe it or not, this is a car yet again that starts at only twenty thousand dollars that is pretty stinking cool so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 Sentra first one being the S starting at $20,630 which is a $680 bump for the 2023 model year but that is the trim level that we have today so that is pretty cool SV trim for $21,560 and lastly the SR going for $23,720 but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the Sentra is going to be the same powering this beast is a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 149 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 146 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 9.2 seconds we'll test that out here in a little bit but mpg numbers coming in at 30 in the city 40 on the highway which by the way is a one mile per gallon bump from the 2023 Sentra. why is that you might be asking that's because there is a new engine start stop system that comes standard for 2024 so whenever you're stopped at a red light the engine is automatically going to turn off for you and whenever it turns green again you start to go it's automatically going to turn on for you that is going to save you one mile per gallon in the end but by the way taking regular unleaded fuel so that's going to save you some money there as well but before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the center i do want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's three of them essentially you got the normal driving mode which is what the center naturally defaults to you have an econ driving mode or eco i'm sorry by the driver's left knee and then there is a hidden sport driving mode which is the horizontal line found on the shifter so that is what we're going to hit for this acceleration test so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 nissan sentra here up to speed all right you guys from a standstill three two one go <laughs> it's loud all right, not the quickest thing in the world. I will say there was a good bit of peppiness when you originally hit the gas there, and that's typically what you find with uh, less powerful four-cylinder engines, like the Toyota Corolla, for example. So I gotta like the peppiness. I do appreciate that, but once you really get on the gas, it is loud, not the quickest thing in the world, but it should get the job done for things like merging onto the highway and all that fun stuff. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And the interesting thing about the brakes is it is gonna differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. For example, we are in the S trim level today, and with that S trim level, you do get front disc rear drum brakes. However, if you were to go with that SV or SR trim, you will get four wheel ventilated disc brakes that do come standard. And that obviously is gonna give you the better braking power. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance number goes for the SV and SR at least, that's gonna come in at 114 feet. And I remember driving that, I believe in last year's review, and it was a very firm braking feel. It does immediately bring you to a stop. So I did appreciate that. As far as this braking feel goes, it is about average, I will say. It's not a firm braking feel, I will say that. It's not a soft braking feel like an SUV either. Either. it's pretty much as you would expect a compact car to brake like but the other setup is going to be a lot better the four-wheel ventilated disc brakes for the sv and the sr trim so i'll just put it that way but the touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's actually not too bad i feel like it is better than the civic but you do tend to feel a little bit more of the road in compact cars i'll just put it that way but it's not bad it's not bad and again it's not bad but as far as cabin noise goes that's okay you do get a little bit of road noise you guys could probably tell i'm going 37 miles per hour there is a little bit of road noise coming into the cabin but that's to be expected in compact cars yet again so i personally don't have any issues there but the steering feel the steering feel guys i'm telling you it is weighted on the heavier side of things and that is one of the things i always appreciate about the Sentra. it is instantly pointing you in the direction that you want to go because of that heavier steering feel it's kind of like the honda civic and it is a heck of a lot heavier than the toyota corolla toyota corolla is like loosey-goosey but the Sentra, 
I don't know, man. I like it, so absolutely no issues there. Touching on visibility, at least when it comes to rear visibility, out of my rear view mirror, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Nissan Sentra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Nissan Sentra finished in super black. In case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today but again the center has been slightly refreshed for 2024 there's slightly redesigned headlights also the redesigned front fascia as well specifically the grille you guys see those chrome perimeters previously the that part was a little bit more inside closer to the middle of the grille and now they just pushed it out slightly so just a slight little refresh up front but anyways let's go ahead and start with where the Sentra is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number three indicating that the new Nissan Sentra is still built and assembled in Mexico but touching up front here Nissan V-Motion front grille with active grille shutters coming standard so active grille shutters meaning the grille shutters are going to open and close dependent upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time so that's something I first saw in BMW so I do like that feature of course it's going to be finished in either chrome or black you guys can see those chrome accents on our s trim level but gloss black is available as well then taking a look at the headlights halogen headlights coming standard for the s and sv trims then led headlights with led daytime running lights for the sr trim but either way you still get the automatic feature like we have today you still get automatic high beams for all trim levels as well so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so definitely a very nice feature there but another thing that has changed for the 2024 Sentra is there is no longer any availability for fog lights down below but I will say they were halogen I believe anyway so not a huge deal there but I did want to mention it since it was a change for this model year but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end I do like the slight refresh I think it still definitely looks good but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Sentra all right so now since we are around to the side of this one chrome belt line molding does come standard you do have the floating roof line found on the C pillar there kind of hard to differentiate with a black exterior but essentially it's that line that just separates the roof from the rest of the body more or less taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be gloss black for the sr trim but then heated for the sv and sr and then integrated turret signals for the sr trim level only we do have matte black door handles on our s trim level so i do want to kind of emphasize that because on the sv and sr you're going to get body colored door handles of course then take a look down at the wheel setup 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming on our s trim level 16 inch aluminum alloys for the sv and then 18 inch aluminum alloys found on that sr trim level but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one first thing i actually want to start by mentioning is there is no shark fin antenna found on the roof of the Sentra. that's something i typically find on like bmw and mercedes benz i just think it's a very clean look obviously the radio still works and all that stuff but there is no shark fin antenna so interesting right Anyways, rear spoiler is going to come standard on the SR trim level only. You do have a body colored or gloss black rear diffuser down below. Gloss black is going to be on the uh, SR trim level or available for the SR. Otherwise, you're going to get body colored. So anyways, I think that always looks good on the Sentra. So I do like that. And just below it all, you guys will find a single exhaust outlet tucked away. However, you will get a chrome tip for the SR trim. But since we don't have the SR, we don't have that with us here today. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since you are around to the back of the center when it comes to opening that rear trunk there is a button on the key fob there is also a button kind of by the driver's side left knee there is no button on the trunk itself for the s trim level i do want to say that but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 14.3 cubic feet if that was not enough space there is a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down for a good bit of extra space then if you needed it there is a cargo lighting back there as well grocery hooks are available they don't come standard but there is also a spare tire found underneath that cargo floor as opposed to the fix a flat in case anybody was curious but so then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 34.7 inches for 
reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. I do want to say though, the back side of the front seats do have some give to them. So if you're a little bit taller of an individual, your knees kind of give into the back side of those front seats. So that's kind of convenient. Rear center armrest with cup holders does not come standard on our S trim level, unfortunately. However, you can get them on the other trim levels. USB charging port uh, also available, but we don't get that with our S trim level. And uh, typical compact car fashion, no rear ventilation. That's the same for the Corolla and the Civic as well, by the way. So that's a pretty standard thing, but then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the S and SV trim levels, sport cloth with orange stitching for the SR trim level. And I do wanna mention there is an optional quilted leather available for the SV trim level only. So I'll put a picture of that on the screen. It definitely looks pretty darn good. Heated front seats that are gonna be optional on the SV and SR. Overall, believe it or not, as far as seat comfort goes, it was perfectly fine for me. I had absolutely no issues taking this thing around for a little test drive. So definitely no issues with seat comfort, even in our S trim level that we have today. But then take a look at the steering wheel, just tilt and telescoping. It's gonna be wrapped in urethane for the S trim level. However, it is gonna be leather wrapped then for the SV and SR. Another cool thing I like about the steering wheel is that it is a flat bottom. And then if you wanted the heated steering wheel, that is gonna be available for the SV trim level. But now, Let's go ahead and make our way to the startup, but let me start by showing you guys this fancy key here. Got your Nissan logo on the top, lock, unlock, and that button to pop the rear trunk there, but there is a remote start that comes on the SV and SR trims. That's going to be on the key fob, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels. So all I'm going to do here, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter there. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center to control what is on there. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. But that gives you things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Trip A, trip B, there's actually a digital speedometer if you wanted to display that up there i liked that and a bunch of other things as well safety information radio information so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges at least but so then make our way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to be optional on the sv and sr trim levels Overhead sunglass holder though, does come standard for all trim levels across the board, I like that. Dual zoom climate control for the SV and SR, otherwise you're gonna get what you guys are looking at right now, it's just a manual dial basically. Frameless rear view mirror with homelet controls go for a little over $400 if you wanted that option, but just in front of the shifter, you got rubberized storage here on our S trim level, a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, aux port as well. Behind the shifter, you got a little bit of storage there, you got dual cup holders and within the center armrest, a ton of space. Dang, that is a lot of space. That's where the Sentra really shines, let me tell you guys, because that is definitely more space than both the Civic and the Corolla. So if you got a lot of stuff, this is gonna work out for you. But honestly, when it comes to the interior quality, it's not as bad as I expected, I gotta be honest. So you got a little bit of contrast stitching found in the doors. It feels like a soft touch material there. The elbow rest on the doors, also perfectly fine as well. Nice soft touch material. I like the Audi-esque gauges found just below the infotainment screen. It gives it more of an upscale feel to it. Even surrounding the cup holders, it's not finished in it just a matte black plastic. It's finished in kind of a texturized carbon fiber look kind of a pattern. So I like that as well. And surrounding the shifter, you got a gloss black finish. And I know these things I'm saying aren't anything groundbreaking but for a car that only is going for twenty thousand dollars when you compare it to the competition that's actually not that bad i'm telling you guys but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here a seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come on our s trim level however that is bumped up for the sv and sr that puts you at an eight inch color touchscreen display either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming either way you get android auto and apple carplay so if you have data on your phone that's free navigation displayed up there you gotta love that you can check out your driving statistics up there along with your radio information and so when it comes to the sound systems there are three of them in total s trim level is going to give you four speakers sv and sr are going to give you a six speaker sound system and then there is an optional sound system available that is going to be an eight speaker bose sound system so Seeing as we have the S trim level with us here today, we do got four speakers. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. We both know what it's like to be. All right, couple things with that four speaker sound system. I don't believe I've ever tested uh, the four speaker sound system here in the Sentra 
base impressed me, and I've always said this, Nissan does an incredible job with the base and their sound systems that they put in their vehicles. I didn't expect it to be that much bass. Having said that, Clarity was like a four speaker sound system. I'll just put it that way, but the bass did really impress me. So for a four speaker sound system, it's not horrible, not the best clarity, but the bass was kind of impressive. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the center in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS top safety pick if you go with the SR trim level only, because that's what gives you that LED lighting. Halogen lighting will never get an IIHS top safety pick, just saying. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard for all trim levels, forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, rear automatic braking, lane trace assist, driver retention monitoring system, rear parking sensors, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert then as well. That's pretty notable. I like that. And then if you were to go with either the SV or SR trims, you're going to get adaptive cruise control on top of all of that as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Sentra, great steering feel. I love the weight to it. It definitely immediately points you in the direction that you want to go. Excellent braking as well, specifically for the SV and SR. Just okay braking for the S, but the fact that you can get 60 to zero and 114 feet at the car in this price range, that's a sports sedan number right there. So that's absolutely amazing. Excellent price. I think that is definitely what's gonna get most people's attention on this thing. The fact that this thing starts under $21,000 is absolutely incredible, especially with all the inflation we are getting. So gotta love that. Very good looking car as well, in my personal opinion. The two things I think uh, I would change about the center here would be wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. That would certainly be nice. A lot of manufacturers are doing that right now. The wires are going to completely go away in the future, I know. And LED headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. I think that is a necessity as well. The reason I say that is because both the Corolla and the Civic both give you LED headlights coming standard and that would also make the Sentra an IIHS top safety pick for every single trim level across the board as well. So that is something I would certainly add in the future. But let me know what you guys think of our Sentra S in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're new to car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video, stay gold.